Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we were looking at the cloud networking cheat sheet. And there's a lot of information here um, about cloud networking that might not exactly show up in the exam, but it all builds up to CIDR information. And it's going to make your life a lot easier if you know this stuff. So let's start at the top here with the OSI model. So the open systems interconnection defines standards of communication for telecom and computer systems. And there are seven layers in the OSI model. We have the physical layer. This is responsible for transmitting raw bits as a byte signal to the destination network. You have data links. This is responsible for packaging data into frames to transfer to network nodes on the same layer. You got the network layer. It's responsible for routing or forwarding IP addresses. You got the transport layer. This is responsible for end-to-end -end, uh, connections and reliability. The sessions layer. This is responsible for creating, maintaining, and destroying sessions. The presentation layer. This is for formats, uh, uh, format and delivering information to the application layer. Then you have the application layer itself, which is the closest to the end user, used by software applications such as emails, web apps, and shell terminals. The layers I want you to remember is layer three, layer four, and layer seven. So network transport and application for cloud networking and specifically AWS. So if you use AWS DDoS protection, uh, which is called Shield, I should have called AWS Shield there. I don't know why I wrote DDoS protection, but it's called Shield. Uh, it uh, operates on layer three and four and seven. And if you use AWS Shield Advanced, it covers all the, all those three layers. So I think, um, I think basic is three and four. And then with uh, Advanced, you get seven. If you're using AWS WAF, uh, WAF is, stands for Web Application Firewall. Since it's an application firewall, it's going to operate at layer seven, which is the application layer. Then you have the application load balancer, which operates at layer seven, the application layer. Then you have the network load balancer, which actually operates at the transport layer. Um, and this just has to do with the protocol. Um, some, uh, yeah, so that's what it is. It's not three. You'd think it'd be three, but it's actually four. Uh, a, then we have a network interface controller, a NIC. This connects a computer to a computer network and operates on layer one and two because it's literally hardware. It's how you get a connection to the computer. Um, AWS has a virtual NIC called the Amazon VPC Elastic Network Interface, also known as ENIs. Every EC2 instance has at least one ENI, whether you know that or not. Uh, EC2 instances can have multiple ENIs attached to them um, for some reason. Uh, and so we're on to page two here. So an IP address serves two main functions. It's either the host or network interface identify, uh, identification. So who is this? It's for location addressing. So where do they live on the network? There are two versions of IP currently in use, IPv4, where there's only 4 billion addresses, and then IPv6, where there's uh, 340 undecillion addresses. Even though IPv6 is more modern, we still use IPv4 because it's just easier to work with. But at some point, we'll make the switch over to IPv6. IPv4 addresses have 32 bits and uses this dot decimal notation. You've definitely seen an IP address before, 192.168.0.1. Uh, then you have IPv6. I, I wrote IPv4, but I, it's IPv6 here. It's 128 bit. It uses hexadecimal notation. So there's an example of um, uh, an IPv6 address. Uh, let's talk a bit about binary. So binary is a, a base two numeral system. It's either zero or one. It's called binary because we only use two numbers. Uh, a bit is a basic unit of information that represents either a zero or a one. A byte is a basic unit of information that represents consecutive bits. The most common type of bit it, uh, is eight consecutive bits known as an octet. And octets is what we use when we're building IP addresses and, and IP stuff in general. In binary math, every number doubles when it's when it's uh, when it's uh, marked as one, so the bit is one. So from left or from right to left, it'll be one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one, twenty-eight, fifty-six. And I, I I know all those. They're just doubling by two. So just an example here: if you had all zeros and the on the one, it's going to be one. If you have two ones in, it's three. If they're all ones, it's two fifty-six. If the last or the first one's one, the rest are zero. It's one twenty-eight. Those are good ones to help you kind of remember your binary math. Uh, private address spaces uh, uh, are commonly used are 10.0.0 class A, 17.168.0.0 class B, 192.168.0 class C. You can use whatever you want when you're making your, your VPCs. Um, but you know, uh, some people might think that if you use a, a particular number, it indicates the size of the network. Uh, then we have dynamic host configuration uh, protocol, DHCP. So, uh, so this dy dynamically assigns an IP address to a device on the network. Within AWS VPC, you're able to change the DCHP settings to another DNS server. You might want to do this for security because maybe you're routing it through there and they have like filtration options or something. Uh, we're on to page three. So a subnet mask is a 32-bit number looking like an IP address, but it's not. So the uh, subnet net will be like 255.0.0.0. A subnet mask divides the IP address into the net ID and the host ID for masking. A subnet mask is also sometimes referred to as a net mask, 
but it generally means the same thing. Uh, AWS reserves five IP addresses when you define a CIDR, uh, a CIDR address there. So if we were using that address there, this is what it would take. It would, uh, so we have one for the reserved by AWS for network address, VPC router, then there's another one and then another one. We don't know what those are for, but they reserve them. And then they always reserve the last one in the, in the address for the broadcast address. If you allocate forward slash 24, which is 256 addresses, you'll actually only really have 251 addresses because you have to minus the five. Uh, then we have classes inter, inter domain routing CIDR, and this is the whole thing. This is the whole thing why we're doing uh, cloud networking and all this knowledge. Uh, it is a method for allocating IP addresses for IP routing where you choose the uh, the size of the of the networks versus host. With with classful, they're very defined. With classless, we can have whatever size of network we want. Um, so we have CIDR block range. This defines the size of a network versus host and the range of an IP address. Uh, CIDR notation defines the subnet mask, how many uh, host addresses will be available. So that forward slash, whatever that number is, is going to give us the amount of addresses. So if we have forward slash 24, that's 256. The number in the CIDR notation indicates the leading bits flipped to one. So if you have forward slash 24, um, the first 24 are going to be uh, ones. Um, I don't know if that's a good example because <laughs> that's not 24. But um, but anyway, the point is, is that that's what it does. Uh, if you have forward slash 32, it's going to be one address. Forward slash 24, that's 256 address. 20, forward slash 23, that's 128 address. Forward slash 16, that's 65,000. I remember all these. I just recommend that you remember those four and you'll be in good shape. And there you go. That's cloud networking.